morning. Thank you for the opportunity to present the WITRA study. Raul Nogueira and myself, Mark Ribó, are going to discuss about direct transfer to energy suite and the triage for faster treatment. I believe our main disclosure here is that we both are, are uh, co-principal investigators of the WITRAS study. And in the agenda, we're going to discuss why we believe in this approach, what is the technology currently, and we're going to have a few slides about uh, the WITRAS study that is going to be launched uh, soon in the following weeks. So why we believe in this technology? So it's all about reducing time workflow time, and especially here focusing in the in-hospital workflows. So everything starts where the patient is delivered by EMS to the emergency room door. We try to wait for the patient here at the door and take the best decision already here. We want to mimic what has been done for IVTPA initially, when we were able to reduce door to needle time from 120 minutes down to 15, 16 minutes as we were increasing our number of treated patients. So in our hospital, we try to follow this, the following workflow. We promote always pre-hospital alert. We believe that this activates the team. And if we use pre-hospital scales, that give us information about the likelihood of large vessel occlusion, we can be prepared mostly in those cases in which we believe the patient is going to have a severe stroke with high probability of large vessel occlusion. Then we avoid and we skip ER as much as possible, and we ask the technicians, the paramedics, to deliver the patient directly to the CT scan. After acquisition of non contra CT, we try always to start already the IVTPA bolus if it's uh, um, indicated, and we acquire additional imaging in order to uh, find out if the patient is a candidate for endovascular treatment. So from previous studies, we know that there is a very strong association of the door to puncture time and the outcome of the patient. It's an independent predictor. And you see here, if we take as a reference 60 minutes, for each additional 30 minutes of delay in the door to groin puncture, we see that it induces poor outcome. And you see that in this study, there was a great variability between centers in this uh, key performance indicator. Some of them performs quite well for the, for the given time, 2014, and others were, did not perform so well. So even in the fairly recently published trials, as Dawn, Swift Prime, and Escape, we could not reduce much below 60 minutes the, this, the, this metric, the door to groin puncture. So let's take an extreme case that we can use as an illustrative case. So let's imagine that we have a perfectly fine patient that is going to receive a scheduled uh, angiogram. He's delivered to the angio suite. And in this exact moment, when we transfer him to the table, he becomes aphasic and hemiplegic. So here in this situation, probably most of us are going to agree that the, it's going to be enough to perform a convium CT to rule out an hemorrhage and immediately start, uh, in the absence of an hemorrhage, the procedure, an endovascular procedure. So now it's all about uh, a decision, how long, how long we believe uh, this uh, period of time is enough in order to still select the patient with a convium CT. Is it 30 minutes from symptoms onset, one hour, two hours, three, six hours? That's, that's the question. So on top of that, we can add the following information. For we know that more than 90% of acute stroke patients presenting within six hours from onset will have an aspect score greater than five compatible with endovascular treatment, according to the guidelines. So it's going to be probably a waste of time to perform complicated imaging on those patients only to unselect less than 10% of patients in which there, there might be a low aspect. And on top of that, in which we are not sure that we are not benefiting with endovascular treatment. So in other words, we are, we are harming 90% of the patients in order to select 10% by, um, by doing long, long, uh, long imaging protocols. 
So in hospital, we are, have three different pathways. We have direct transfer to the emergency room. On admission, we try to avoid that as much as possible. Again, we believe it's a waste of time to go initially to the ER and then to the CT scan, and then sometimes back to the ER before you go to the NG suite. We believe everything that can be done at the ER can be done at the CT suite. So ideally, we should transfer the patient directly to, to CT and uh, stabilize the patient here, take the blood, the blood line here, the blood samples and everything. However, if we are pre-notified that the patient with a high suspicion of LVO is gonna be admitted, we confirm an NIH greater than 10 within six hours from onset, and the whole team is on site and the angio suite is available, we favor direct transfer to angio suite. So, I'm gonna let Raul discuss about what is the present status of the technology. Thank you, Mark, for this excellent presentation. You're now gonna be talking about the recent advancements in the Convin CT technology, as well as about the rationale and design of the WITRAS trial. So what you can see here is, is that at least for the detection of intracranial hemorrhage, this technology is already excellent, okay? However, we have some uh, additional advancements and specifically what excited about uh, this new acquisition, it's called the butterfly mode uh, technology. Essentially, Combin CT has been traditionally acquired with a helical mode. This use an elliptical mode and by doing so, you can actually decrease the amount of artifact, you know, the typical cone beam artifact, those helical artifacts, circular artifacts that you can get with the cone beam CT, as well as a beam hardening artifact. You can see here the type of reconstructions you can get much more superior than what you had in the recent past with this new technology. And here you see the optimized cone beam CT technology with the butterfly mode versus a conventional CT. And you see that you're really approximating conventional CT in terms of the definition. And hopefully in the near future, you may be able to even define gray white matter differentiation using the Conbin CT technology. So moving on to the data that you currently have about the direct to angel suite approach, we know it's a lot faster, right? There are now several single center studies. Mark has studied this, we have studied this, other colleagues have studied this. And there is on average uh, a range between 22 to almost 60 minutes time savings in terms of door to puncture times, right? When you take this patient direct to the angel suite as opposed to go through the conventional imaging pathway. Our goal here would be to show that this is actually associated with better treatment uh, uh, outcomes in terms of uh, function outcomes in the long term at 90 days. So the idea now is to do a mode centric study, randomizing the patients to these two different selection paradigm pathways and see if that's going to lead to better outcomes. So in order to do that, you have to select the best population. And uh, these are, what you're trying to do here is to save time. So you really need to get the population that has the greater time sensitivity, the fast progressors, right? So when you look at this spectrum from onset to growing puncture, what are the patients that are the most time sensitive, right? And um, this recent work from um, Mark's group actually demonstrated that when you look at the different time windows, okay, for the direct to angel suite and compare it with the conventional pathway, really looks like that the, the bulk of the benefit happens early on in the first six hours and more so within the first 180 minutes. You can see here the point estimate for less than three hours versus greater than three hours and the bulk, it's really here. So we would like to have just patients treated in this ultra early phase in order to maximize the benefit of the approach. What you see here 
in this uh, new graph is the adjusted odds ratio over time. And again, you can see that you have essentially this plateau in the odds ratio within the first, let's say, three hours. But then this benefit over the conventional selection paradigm decays and it almost essentially disappears after six hours. So that's why we have chosen the six hour limit in terms of less seeing well for the target population of this study. Moving on now for the very other uh, important question, which is, can you do intravenous thrombolysis if you are doing this approach? And again, you have the work here from Valderbon in Barcelona, where they had 20 patients that received intravenous TPA, okay, versus 60 patients that also received intravenous TPA in the direct angel versus conventional pathway. And these were patients that were in general old, 73 years old, and they had high NIH drug scales, 17 to 20. And you see the baseline characteristics were pretty well matched across the two groups here. When you look at the door to needle times, they were 23 minutes for both groups. So there is absolutely no concerns about delaying in TPA delivery by doing the direct to angel approach. But when you look at the door to growing times, you can see remarkable uh, changes with greater benefit here. Let's look at safety. The rates of symptomatic intracranial hemorrhage were actually zero, zero out of the 20 patients had symptomatic intracranial hemorrhage with the direct to angel versus 6.7 in the conventional pathway. And mortality was also numerically lower in the direct to angel, five versus 10%. This is a very small study, uh, so not power to, to demonstrate uh, superiority or no inferiority, but you can see here there is no signal of any safety concerns and here you have the rates of hemorrhagic transformation, including the more benign hemorrhagic infarction, which again, were not statistically significant differently across the two groups. So while you are performing the We Trust study, our goal here is again to demonstrate that this new paradigm with the direct to the angel suite and the combing uh, CT selection paradigm would result in superior outcomes at 90 days in terms of uh, uh, function outcomes in patients that have confirmed large vessel occlusion strokes in relation to the standard pathway that you are currently using with either conventional CT or MRI. The trial will include 16 centers. You are planning to enroll just over 500 patients across nine different countries in Europe, North America, and Latin America. We expect to be able to complete this trial in two years. Our endpoint is the shift in the three-month mod uh, modified rank scale scores. And again, the target population is the early window, zero to six hours in patients with suspect LVO as demonstrated by an NIH stroke scale equal or greater than 10. And here is our objective again. So you're gonna be enrolling both patients that come straight to the comprehensive stroke center for the emergency room, as well as the transfer patients. You wanna make sure that you have a good representation of direct to the ED uh, uh, patients in this trial. Again, the idea here is to skip conventional imaging, bring them straight to the angel suite, select and treat them a lot faster in order to get better clinical outcomes. And here is the randomization scheme of the trial. Inclusion criteria, again, for six hours NIH equal greater than 10, those patients are gonna be screened immediately upon arrival at the door of the hospital and randomized to either conventional image with CTMRI or combined CT at the angel suite. We then gonna establish the overall patient population. The intention to treat it's gonna be represented by the patients that don't have hemorrhage and have either intracranial ICA or M1 occlusion. So those are the intention to treat population and those patients are gonna be based on their local decisions. Uh, they're gonna undergo thrombectomy or not. 
and you're gonna follow them for the 90 day modified rank scale and hopefully show a benefit in terms of that endpoint. Uh, again, highlighting here our objective, you are not only trying to show faster treatment, but you are trying to show what really matters here, which is an improvement in the degree of disability at 90 days by using combined CT in the angel suite versus uh, conventional therapy. And we trust that together we will impact the future of stroke treatment by using this new technology, this new selection modality, achieving much faster treatments and kind of more closely mimicking what cardiologists have done for so many years. You know, you select matter, you select less, you treat more patients, you treat them faster, and I think that's the best way of optimizing outcomes in the whole patient population. Thank you very much for your attention.